and I've been asked to uh, share this meeting because Michael uh, Michael Nolte could not attend. Yeah. So I and Michael Nolte filled in. <laughs> and uh, with the spirit of discretion, going around, we're going to start this five minutes late, which she would never have done. Oh, let me see. She never would have done. Uh, there, we have an agenda. We have um, uh, three items, but I'd like to uh, introduction. Well, introductions first, uh, sir. John Nolte. Marjorie Bagg, Central City Extra. Uh, Mary Noel has to, uh, Mary Noel Pepper's UC Hastings Law School. Susan Bryan, uh, resident, live across the street, and I'm the a video videographer. Denise Dory, I live on Eddie and Taylor. Uh, make six shows at Bayback and Public Access TV. Brandon Kleiner, TMDC. And Brandon Kleiner, TMDC. Uh, Betty Trainer, uh, friends of Boda for Park. Courtney Hopkins, of Hawaii. And I'm David Seward uh, with PC Hastings and the Tenderloin Economic Development So uh, we have an agenda, but I'd like to take things slightly out of sequence by uh, to accommodate some of our presenters. Uh, the folks from uh, TNDC, if you guys could come up. Sure. And, uh, this yeah. is concerning the Franciscan Power updates, which uh, I think we all know had uh, suffered a fire a year ago. Uh, 2011, actually. Yeah, so it's been quite a while now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> it already happens when you know it. Thank you all. Yeah, I was a witness to that. It was Arson. Oh. Okay. So um, what we have here is just uh, one of our marketing flyers so that you have information. We also have applications. If anybody wants to take applications with them today. Uh -huh. um, Basically, we are in the process right now of accepting applications. We are at 400 and coming. 19 applications. We're expecting close to 3,000, is what the city is saying that we're going to expect. Um, our application period closes, sorry, uh, closes on July 6th. After the application period closes on July 6th, we're going to be doing a lottery for all of the applicants. Um, our first move-ins will be the last week of July, and then our, we will be fully leased up by the end of August. So we have a, an aggressive schedule to get everybody back and rehoused by the end of August. That's a quick synopsis of Franciscan Towers, where we are at this stage, and maybe if anybody has any questions, I could answer those for you. The, um, you know where Glide is? Oh, yes, it's a Where? Next block. Go up Jones way. Street, make a right on Ellis, and it's a block away. It's this way? Yeah, yeah up the way. street. Okay. Yeah. And then turn left. Um, right. Right? All right, right. sorry. <laughs> uh, so, what I was going to ask, um, I understand the application process and a lot of it is always the way, but how about, is there a preference for the people that were living there? Yes, yeah. so we have a few preferences at the building. One of them, and uh, the top preference, is for anybody that was displaced by the fire. Okay. Um, currently, we had about 20 interested uh, in coming back. We've gotten a couple more since our application period started. Um, we also have a shelter plus care preference. 35 of the units uh, will be shelter plus care units. We also offer a preference for the certificate of uh, preference program holders from the city, the old redevelopment, and then also the Ellis Act housing program. Who's the one before Alice? Uh, it's called the Certificate of Preference. It's part of the uh, Old Redevelopment Agency Displacement. And how many rooms do We have 105 units, and 104 of them are uh, for not manager units. We have one on site manager. And uh, are the units um, like a little studio, or is that how they are? So we have uh, small studios, large studios, and one bedrooms. All of the units have a private bath and a full kitchen. Oh, good. So, are these units the same size as the units before the fire? Yes, we've moved a couple walls on some of them, but they are the same. Basically the same. Basically the same. So, you, so you just did the re total rehab of uh, after the fire, but there was no more additional, um, were there more bathrooms added or anything like that? Or nothing? No, no. So basically the same. The kitchen has to be the same. And Basically the same, yeah, just new cabinetry, new flooring, um, new bathroom fixtures, um, yeah. Okay. And also, is this proposed account form going to be back to the office for the TMC? Yes, so yeah, the first part is leasing up by the end of August, and then after August, the ground 
floor space for the commercial units, which has TDC offices and also our Tenderloin after school program will be in September. What's the total number of units? Uh, 105. Are these rents very different than they were before? Uh, so, yeah, since 2011, they are about a couple hundred dollars above what they were in 2011. Question? Yeah. The, the, the income on this, what does that represent in terms of uh, the median income percentage? I don't have that with me, but I, um, so we used Mo's AMI percentage, um, I believe. The, the average was like 48%. 48% of the median income? Yes, of Mo, uh, the mayor's office and limits, which are a little bit lower than the state or our house. Yeah. Any other questions, folks? Um, yeah, uh, now somebody that's like on just Social Security, they, would that mean they couldn't get in, you know, like a, a widow or something? Uh, not necessarily. We um, So the minimum income is there. We have about maybe 10 units that are like 25% AMI, so they have a lower rent, which is the 615 or 659, so they could get in. Also, TDC is looking at possibly some units will be at a lower rent to supplement so that we can allow more individuals on fixed incomes. Uh, can, HUD, HUD, can HUD pay some of these? I mean, like somebody's like... Uh, has Section 8 or something, or one of these sections, or what is it? The, the, the voucher? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if you have a, if the tenant has a voucher, they can certainly move in. Shelter Plus Care is similar to the voucher program, so they're supplementing uh -huh. the uh, rent, where tenants pay 30%, and then they make up the rest. Uh, what about uh, uh, project-based? Are you project-based, or are you leaving that alone? So we're not, uh, we don't have a contract for project-based, only the Shelter Plus Care, okay. which is the 35 project-based shelter. Can you explain what Shelter Plus Care is? So Shelter Plus Care is through the Human Services Agency. They provide um, referrals to uh, affordable housing developers and property managers for those that are like formerly homeless, seniors, families. Um, they have some HAPWA um, referrals. Any, I think their big focus is mainly now with the families, families with children finding housing, um, but they, they do do uh, single adults as well. So it, it, as where it says shelter plus, that means that something they were in the shelter? Uh, not necessarily. Usually it's um, they're either coming in, they lack permanent housing. So it could be a shelter, it could be temporary housing, it could be on the street, any of those options. They have about five different categories. Trying to please sign in one. Any other questions, folks? Uh, I want to welcome uh, Sergeant Miguel Torres from the SFPD, who's uh, mm -hmm. joining us. Mm -hmm. Did you, did I hear you say that the, the rent was might be lower than what's stated here? Could be lower? So yeah, we're looking at two things. One for the returning units, if we can lower the rent. Right now we haven't made any guarantees. And then Team DC as an organization is looking at finding units within our portfolio that can be even more affordable where we supplement the rent difference. And specifically for? Uh, those on fixed incomes. So I think you said 25% in the units, possibly under 25 AMI. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. I'll leave these up here too if anybody wants to grab any. Thank you. I'll take one. Oh. Thank you. Well, I guess I'm presenting next. <laughs> so, uh, Two items that I don't foresee taking all the time allotted in the uh, agenda. Uh, the first item is the, just an update on the uh, McAllister Street pedestrian safety project. It's done. And uh, we had a very successful uh, tree planting. Uh, tree planting uh, Saturday. We had a lot of neighborhood folks attend. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, community partners included Friends of the Urban Forest, uh, DPW, um, Head Up, Penelope and Economic Development Project, and we had a great turnout at the Vietnamese a Senior Center uh, volunteered as well. So if you get a chance to check it out, I uh, really want to thank provider Jane Kim for her support in this. It couldn't have happened without her. Uh, the outcome, we believe, was extremely favorable and uh, hopefully it improves 
that crossing at Leavenworth and Callister, which is pretty nasty. And so, hope you all wish the best. Uh, any questions on the streetscape? I want to thank you all the neighbors for their patience and prepare questions. So, yes, what's the total amount of trees that you put in on the Oh, I believe on the Hastings That's tree, 18. 18. And then um, through Ted Up and her Duke Force, an additional 20 to plant it throughout the neighborhood. That, that number is an approximation. And then also, because I know the clerk was also doing street maintenance on fire trees that were already there, also too. So, so we had a big whole lot just on clerk because they had all those trucks normally on there too. And, and yeah, they were pretty impressive. They came out and did uh, maintenance on uh, the trees that had been planted in previous efforts. Yes, so that was great. Sergeant Torres, what's going on with the tree out front here? Uh, it's like all the water is. Probably, yeah. I'm not. I'm not too sure how, how they maintain the trees out here, but yeah. Uh, I think it's for this one right here. Yeah. So we put that one in, and, and, and then you were using a gallon of water when you first was planning to go. Well, it's a tender one. You got to be tough to. Yeah, I guess. This uh, yes. David, what did? How do you envision the trees helping Leavenworth and McAllister? Well, there's a, a number of benefits to the urban bully. You know, one is it takes some of the edge off the neighborhood and creates a more comfortable environment. Uh, Friends of Urban Forest uh, asserts that it slows down vehicle traffic. Yeah, I haven't seen that data, but that makes sense to me. What kind of traffic? Vehicle. Vehicle. It slows down the, the car traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, it certainly takes the edge off the neighborhood and creates a more hospitable street safe environment. We're hoping that the neighborhood uh, storekeepers can place outdoor seating mm -hmm. along the Alistair Street. Uh, it's, it's, you know, the, the Tenderloin is very much a work in progress, a block at a time. Uh, Bodecker Park has done remarkable things in this corner. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the goal that we had was pedestrian safety, uh, and a lot of that's achieved by the bulb outs and the pedestrian lighting that we put in. Uh, there's uh, embedded lighting in the sidewalk in front of 198 and 200 in Calistry. And you know, the benefits of uh, trees in terms of carbon dioxide replacement, a healthy environment. So that was the, the goal. The trees are ginkgos, and uh, they actually change colors in the fall, leaves drop in the winter, and they come back in the spring. So uh, I guess the, the notion was a little bit of a, a collegiate feel, you know, but as much as one can achieve given the limitations of the campus. Well, I was just asking because you specifically mentioned that intersection. I didn't know if that intersection. Well, it's the Leavenworth, it's a tough intersection. And a, <laughs> the, the, the number of accidents there, because that's a two-lane thing going north on Leavenworth. Uh, there have been fatalities in the past. Uh, not one recently, thank goodness. But it's, um, and the traffic comes off pretty fast off of 7th Street. Mm -hmm. If she's up 7th, there's a yeah. loop, and there's always idiots yeah. who try to make that uh, the left on to McAllister when they're in the wrong lane. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's just a really bad intersection. Yeah. The Tenderloin, the Little Saigon Transportation Study, uh, identified that as the most dangerous intersection in, in the Tenderloin. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, had a lot of influence on the, the funders of the project. Mm -hmm. The funders were primarily the County Transportation Authority, uh, Prop AA money, which is a surcharge on uh, vehicle license fees. Then Hastings uh, ponied up about $640,000 for some of the work contiguous to its property. So it really was a, a, a partnership in all respects, both uh, financial as well as execution. Mm -hmm. so, yes, Susan. Hi. Uh, now the budget is being hashed out right now. Is there any Do we have improvements because of this budget? Uh, I am not aware of additional funds flowing in. That's not true. There is the work going on on the lighting improvements in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, the funding derived from the uh, California State Medical Center uh, arrangement. Uh, and there's a study going on about light fixtures and lighting stanchions posts. Then the mayor's office is funding a study to uh, place sort of decorative lighting up and down Market Street to sort of uh, enhance the little Saigon uh, footprint. Uh, Larkin from the Asian Art Museum in Fort Geary. Uh, but that's in the study phase. So I, but I'm mm -hmm. not aware of any other major 
your streetscape improvements in the upcoming budget cycle. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Good. So then I'll talk about the Hastings. The next item on the agenda is the Hastings Long Range Campus Plan. Uh, and, and here's a, a layout of the Hastings campus uh, running from Leavenworth and McAllister, McAllister Tower, the garage. Uh, the school's been engaged in a multi-year planning effort that is uh, culminating with exciting projects that are going to come out of line shortly. So this is the first, this actually this is the first step of a, a lengthy uh, outreach uh, process that's going to include uh, the California Envi Environmental Quality Act, uh, neighborhood meetings, uh, dialogues. But as a result of the plan, we identify we have two major issues with our physical plan. Uh, first and foremost is the uh, 198 McAllister. That's where 83% of our teaching space is. Uh, it was built in 1953. The building systems are on their last legs, HVAC, needs structural work. So the governor, we presented a proposal to the governor, and the governor has uh, included in the budget that he should be signing this week funding for a new academic building at 333 Golden Gate. This building would replace the functionality at 198 McAllister. Now, it's going to take a number of years to pull this off. Uh, there are no drawings. We basically have a funding appropriation to move forward. The plan is to begin this summer with the CEQA process, the outreach, and the planning to create a structure here that would be primarily uh, classrooms. Classrooms, our, our legal clinic office, uh, civil justice clinic would be located here. Those uh, functions of the college that really are community serving would be here because it would be right on the Golden Gate Avenue. It would be sited in the lot between the garage and uh, Mary Kay Kane Hall, Turner McAllister. As you may recall, this we had hoped to create a YMCA at this site, but those plans did not bear fruit. And so that's so the YMCA instead elected to shift operations to Bodecker Park. Uh, in partnership with the Boys and Girls <laughs> So the plan, the first domino that falls is the creation of this new teaching space because we really can't do much until this is completed. It's a four and a half year uh, development cycle from July through 20, early 2020 before this building is open and complete. And again, there's gonna be extensive uh, community engagement, again, doing a full-blown environmental review. And then the second big issue we identified was the uh, McAllister Tower, 100 McAllister. Uh, it's a primarily student housing facility. It was built in 1929, has 252 units of housing, about 200 students live there. A lot of money's gone in to upgrade the fire life safety systems. Uh, but we also need to attend to the, uh, the need to structurally strengthen the building. We have not done any major structural work on this building. So the plan would be to complete new academic building at 333 Golden Gate. Upon completion, with the old site of 198, uh, develop additional student housing. Now, in a perfect world, we would be able to figure out whether we could rehab McAllister Tower at the same time. You know, we're in study phase on that. We don't know whether it's financially feasible. We're going to look at all the options. So at the very least, additional student housing would be uh, developed on this site. And we would ideally at the same time upgrade uh, 100 McAllister as soon as this was completed. So again, I, I can't stress enough the timeline here. This is, this is a seven to 10 year timeline. Four and a half years to get this done. When that gets done, we have the opportunity to repurpose this site for housing. When that gets done, we, have, we figure out what we do with Wonder and McAllister. And, you know, that's, again, it's, I think it's critically important that we provide safe housing, safe, affordable housing for our, our student cohort. And while, the, again, a lot of uh, funding is running to upgrade the fire life safety system, there's still a lot of money in the building. So, again, this is the first, the first rollout of this, and, uh, I expect to uh, meet again very frequently on a, on a regular basis. Do you know for the 